Alright guys, so welcome back. So previously we were looking at BMAT 2015 question 16. This question was starred, remember, so it was meant to be a bit difficult. But hopefully guys, with my explanation, it all made sense. Or even better guys, you managed to get the answer the first time. But now guys, we move on to the next question, which is BMAT 2014 question 8. So it says, given that 4 to the P times 8 to the Q equals 2 to the N, express, express N in terms of P and Q. So guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute. Be sure to be back after that minute, we'll be going through the solution. Okay, guys, so welcome back. So let's go through this. So essentially, the 4 and the 8, we need to write it as 2 to the power of something. So making everything 2 to the power of something, and then we can use the basic laws of indices. So 4 can be written as 2 squared to the p, and then times 8 can be written as 2 cubed. And that's going to be to the q equals 2 to the n. And then using the um, laws of indices, a power to a power, you have to just times the two together. So you get 2 to the 2p times 2 to the 3q equals 2 to the n. And then remember, when you times, uh, when it has the same base or both the bases 2, and when you times it together, you have to add the powers. So 2 to the power of 2p plus 3q equals 2 to the n. That means n and this guy is the same. So n is going to be 2p plus 3q. So that answer maps on to b nicely. So hopefully, guys, that made sense. And yes, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, guys, so welcome back. So previously, we were looking at BMAT 2014, question 8. Um, um, to do with this question. Hopefully this question wasn't too difficult guys and uh, a lot of you guys probably didn't even require my help but if you did that's no problem guys because remember we're all here to learn but hopefully that has now made uh, sense to you all. Now guys we move on to PMAT 2013 question 4. This is given that x is 4.6 and 10 to the 7 and y is 2 times 10 to the 6. What is the value of x plus 7y over x minus 2y? Okay guys so pause the video give yourself a minute be sure to be back after that minute we'll be going through the solution. Okay guys, so let's go through this. So we have x plus seven, right? So it's gonna be 4.6 times 10 to the seven plus seven y. So if we do this thing over here times seven, it will be just the two times the seven will be 14. So 14 times 10 to the six, right? Over, then we're gonna divide this by x, which is uh, 4.6 times 10 to the seven, right? Uh, minus, and it's gonna be two lots of i, so it's gonna be two times two, which is four, times 10 to the 6. Okay, so the first thing I could do with this uh, fraction, guys, just to make everything easier, just divide uh, all the terms with one thing that's in common. And one thing that's in common with all of them is 10 to the 6. So if I divide everything by 10 to the 6, uh, 4.6 and 10 to the 7 is just going to become 4.6 times 10 to the 1, which is just going to be 46. Then from the next term, we have plus 14, right? So just bracket them off so you know what it's mapping onto divided by and then uh, 4.6 again um, times 10 because when you divide by 10 to the 6 you're going to get that so you're going to get 46 and then the next term you're going to get is minus 4 so then if you just simplify this out you're going to get 60 over 42 yep yeah. now that's going to be 30 over 21 right so 30 over 21 you can divide both of them by 3 isn't it so that's going to be uh, 10 over 7 so hopefully, you guys, you can see then, and this maps on uh, nicely to answer num uh, answer uh, letter A. So hopefully, guys, um, that has made sense. And remember, this is, again, just talking about the technique, guys. You essentially factor out 10 to the power of something, cancel that out, and that really makes your uh, calculation really straightforward. So hopefully, guys, that has made sense, and I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, guys, so welcome back. So previously, looking at BMAT 2013, where we had this question. Again, remember, this is just a common theme, guys, talking about... Um, how when you factor out 10 to the power of something, it makes the calculation really easy. So that was a quick revision of that. Uh, hopefully, uh, guys, you managed to get the answer, and now it's all um, pretty clear. Now we move on, guys, to BMAT 2012, uh, question 12. It says, evaluate um, that nasty-looking double third. So just a heads up, guys, this I, sh I should have actually put on uh, down as a star because quite a few people find this one quite difficult. But uh, either way, guys, just give this a go. Be sure to be back after a minute, and after that minute, we'll be going through the solution where it should hopefully make a bit more sense. Okay, guys, so welcome back. So let's go through this. So um, let's deal with, actually, first, let's deal with the second uh, third, because this one's quite easier to deal with. So here you have the square root of 4 times 10 to the 3, which is going to be 4,000, isn't it? So 4,000 minus 4 times 10 squared is going to be 400. So, yeah, when you're going to square root that. And this is just going to be the square root, then, of uh, 4,000 minus 400, which is going to be 3,600, isn't it? So 3,600... And then that's just going to be uh, 60, isn't it? Because 6 times 6 is 36, and 10 times 10 is 100. So 36 times 100 is 3,600. So that's that, that, that's that one. But the nasty one, guys, is this one. 
So this one we have a cube root. So we have the cube root, and we have um, 2 times 10 to the 5 over, and then um, the bottom one, when we scare it, we're going to get 25 times 10 to the minus 6, right? Now, there's one one trick you, sh you could do, guys, um, here that will just make everything really, really simple, is in that inside the cube root if you times the top and bottom by four what you're going to get from that is so you're going to get the cube root then of eight times ten to the five right over if you times the bottom one by four you're going to get hundred times ten to the minus six which is going to be ten to the minus four isn't it so ten to the minus four then clearing this up you're going to get the cube root then of um eight times and 10 to the 5 divided by 10 to the minus 4 you're going to be 5 minus minus 4 so 5 plus 4 is going to be 10 to the 9 right and then you just cube root each term so cube root of 8 is going to be 2 and the cube root of 10 to the 9 right is just going to be uh, 10 to the 3 which is basically just 2000 isn't it so then get 2000 minus 60 and then hopefully that maps out nicely guys to 1940 so this question again guys isn't uh, too difficult the main difficulty was just spotting this trick times in the top and bottom by four. Um, so I, I, I talk about every time, guys, factor out 10 to perhaps something. That helps most of the time, but sometimes they put unique features. Like this question, you can't really learn it. You just have to kind of trial and improvement. Uh, and at, trust me, guys, as you do more of these questions, you'll just naturally get better at them. So don't worry if you're not getting to get at an early stage, but over time, uh, you should be managing to spot the uh, common assignments. So hopefully, guys, that has made sense. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, guys, so previously we were looking at BMAT 2012, question 12. Um, in total, this question hopefully wasn't too difficult. The main difficulty was just spotting that trick. Once you spot that trick, it's pretty straightforward from there. But don't worry, guys, if you haven't, if you didn't spot that trick first time, you get better at this um, over time. But now, guys, we move on to the next one, which is BMAT 2011. This is starred, remember. So it's, you can expect this to be a bit uh, difficult. This is uh, W, X, Y, and Z are integers such that W is less than X squared, X is greater than Y squared, and Y squared is less than Z squared, and X is greater than Z. Then it says which one of the following inequalities must be true and then you have options a to e so guys pause the video give yourself a minute be sure to be back after that minute or we'll be going through the solution okay guys so let's go through this so this question guys is a bit of a teaser it's not too difficult but you just have to really spot one like one thing essentially and that thing is this uh, fact over here right so this fact over here x is greater than y squared so if x is greater than y squared right um, that must mean then that x has to be greater than y, isn't it? Right? Um, and that's really it. That's really the only thing in the question. And that the thing that has to be true then, uh, the option that has to be true then is d. Because imagine, guys, if x is greater than y squared, so let's just take an example. Uh, x is uh, like, uh, let's say, 29 and y is 5, right? So 29 is clearly greater than 5 squared, which is 25, right? Uh, and that also means that 29, which was x, is also greater than 5, which was y. So that's just an example. And whatever example, whatever numbers you use, guys, you would find that, therefore, that has to be the inequality that I always have to write. You can even prove it for a negative number, right? So um, let's just say, for example, y is minus 5, x is um, 29. So 29 is clearly greater than minus 5 squared, which is 25. And 29 also is greater than... Um, minus five so if you this is a general guys so with these kind of ones which ones must be true if you can show it for a negative number uh, uh and a positive number you're more likely to be right um really so hopefully guys that has made sense uh yes we look we look forward to seeing you in the next question okay guys so welcome back so previously we we're looking at bmat 2011 question 12. now guys um hopefully this question there was just a little teaser there um, you really the rest of the question uh, was irrelevant you just had to focus on that x is greater than y squared but don't worry guys if you didn't get that you spot more of these patterns as we go along and hopefully over time guys you get better. that's the whole idea of these videos that you improve over time and you see improvements in yourself but now guys we move on to bmat 2010 again a starred question so it says question four um i have two containers with different capacity initially the large one is full of water and the smaller one is empty i pour water from the large container to the smaller container until they contain the same amount uh, or volume of water rather the volume of water in the large container is now p times its capacity and the volume of water in the small container is now q times its capacity which of the following about p and q must be true right so guys pause the video give yourself a minute be sure to be back after that minute we'll be going through the solution Okay, guys, so here it says which, 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 uh, which of P and Q must be true. So this is must be true for any, for any scenario, 
So you can basically, guys, make a scenario up yourself and test that scenario and see what you get. And whatever you get in that is basically going to be true for all other values because whatever is true for P and Q must be true for all scenarios possible. That's the idea. So let's just say um, we had a large container and this large container had a capacity of, let's just say, six liters. And the smaller container here had a capacity, let's just say, of four liters. Right. So the idea is get then, guys, that the um, big container is full. So this one's full of water, so it has six liters of water. Then you're going to distribute that amount of water so they both have the same amount of water. So you're essentially going to um, split that water in half. So the six liters, you're going to split it three liters and three liters. So now, guys, this one has three liters and this one also has three liters. So now, guys, hopefully you can see in the four liter one, your capacity is basically 75 percent right and then in your uh, big one so the six liter since you're basically taking out half you're left with half and therefore your capacity uh, that you're taking up in there is going to be 50 percent right so what is it saying so it's saying uh p uh in the sun so, so um in the large container so the six liter is, is therefore p is going to be 50 percent or 0 0.5 and q in this case is going to be 0 0.75 so which one essentially fits with that idea so um p equals 0 0.5 you either have b or c but Q is greater than 0 0.5, clearly, isn't it? So then uh, hopefully, guys, you can understand them that the answer in this case would be C. So hopefully, guys, that has made sense. And yes, we really look forward to seeing you in the next question. Okay, guys, so welcome back. So previously, we were looking at BMAT 2010 question four, another starred question. Hopefully, guys, you've seen this technique again, guys. So whenever they ask you which one, which one of the following must be true in terms of essentially this kind of question, right? What you essentially have to do, guys, is since it has to be true for all possible scenarios, just make yourself up a scenario and see which one it fits in, in, in with. Because if it fits in this scenario, since it must be true for all scenarios, it's going to fit in with all the others um, by default. So hopefully, guys, that has made sense. Now we move on, guys, to um, 2009, BMAT 2009, question 12. It says, this binary operation, which is double diamond, defines a, a mathematical binary operation that y diamond x equals y to the power of x over x for all positive integers. It says, what's the value of 2 diamond 3 bracket diamond two so guys pause the video give yourself a minute be sure to be back after that minute we'll be going through the solution okay guys so what this is really testing is this idea of bid mass so remember bid mass so um b i d m a s so brackets indices division multiplication addition subtraction so the first first thing you have to do here is deal with the brackets so we're going to deal with this two diamond three right so two diamond three so let's say two diamond three equals um 2 to the power of 3 over 3, and then 2 to the power of 3 is just 8 over 3. So then now we have 8 over 3 diamond 2, which is just going to be 8 over 3 all squared over 2, which is just going to be 64 over 9 over 2, which is going to be 64. Uh, that's that going to be 64 over 18. Yeah. And then dividing top and bottom by 2, it's going to be 32 over 9, isn't it? 32 over 9, yeah. And we can't really sim can we simplify that further. No, we can't. I don't think we can simplify that further. So therefore, guys, hopefully you can understand here, the answer would be C. So hopefully, guys, that wasn't too difficult. Just a sort of new concept, but conceptually, hopefully that was not too difficult. And yes, we really look forward to seeing you in the next video, guys. Okay, guys, so welcome back. So previously, we looked at BMAT 2009, question 12, to do with this weird mathematical operation. But hopefully, guys, um, it might have been a new concept, but don't be frightened about new concepts. Hopefully, guys, that wasn't too difficult, and hopefully that has really made sense uh, at this point. But now, guys, we move on to the next question, BMAT 2009, uh, where we have, um, again, an evaluate and a nasty-looking uh, cert. So, guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that minute, and after that, we'll be going through the solution. Okay, guys, so welcome back. So let's go through this. So um, let's basically deal with this uh, fraction first before we even square root it. So the the main like nasty looking thing about this fraction, guys, is the fact that you have this one over two five hundred, which kind of looks weird compared to the other terms, right? Generally, this is the idea, guys. When you, if you have this kind of situation, um, they, they're going to purposely give you sort of a nice number so you can turn it into 10 to the power of something. So 1 over 2, 500, if I divide that by 4, now I'm going to get 1 over 10,000, which is going to be 10 to the minus 4, isn't it? Right? So that's uh, that's a good thing to do in, in this case. So if you, if I divide everything by 4, um, the first term, 2 times 10 to the minus 3, if I divide that by 4, 2 divided by 4 is just half. 
is going to get 0 0.5 times 10 to the 3 plus, and then I divide 8 by 4 is going to be 2 times 10 squared. And then obviously we said if I divide 1 by 2, 500 divided by 4 is going to be 1 over 10,000, and 1 over 10,000 is going to be 10 to the minus 4, isn't it? So it's going to be 10 to the minus 4 plus 0 0.75 times 10 to the minus 4. Right? And then, guys, you're just left with the norm scenario. You're going to factor out 10 to the power of something from all of them. Um, in this case, actually, what I would like to do, um, probably the best thing to do over here is, actually, yes, let, let, let's just take out 10 to the power in, in numerator. And so let's do it in the, the numerator first. So you're going to end up with 10 squared, isn't it? Right? Because the common thing between 10 cubed and 10 squared is 10 squared. And then this, you're going to end up with 0 0.5 times 10, which is just 5 plus 2. Right? And then at the bottom, you're going to factor out 10 to the minus 4, and then you're going to be left with 1 plus 0 0.75, right? So then you're going to end up with 10 squared, 7 over 10 minus 4, 1.75, right? And then 1.75, well, so what's the relation between 1.75 and 7? So if you double 1.75, you're going to get 1.5 plus 2, which is going to be 3.5. And if you double that again, you're going to get 7, yes. So uh, it, it's a four to one relationship, isn't it? You're gonna get so this you can cancel out to four, and this you can cancel out to one. So you're basically gonna get um, ten squared, lots of four over ten to the minus four, and then ten squared divided by ten to the minus four. Remember, you when you divide, you minus five, so two minus minus four is gonna be six. So you're gonna get um, ten to the six, four. But then remember, you have to square root that at the end. So you have four times ten to the six. You have to square root which is going to be 2 times 10 cubed, which is going to be basically 2,000, isn't it? So hopefully, guys, you can see then um, that F is the correct answer. Also, another trick, guys, that I can just advise you and look at the answers. So if you look at the answers, can you see there's loads of answers which have sort of 20, 200, 2,000, 20,000. That sort of tells me that um, the answer is most likely something should be along two, some, two, 2 with something amount of zeros. But the reason I did is given all those options, um, I think anyways, because you probably have, you, you, people could probably fall into a common trap. So that's why so they don't, they don't uh, people can fall into a common trap and um, the amount of zeros they get can vary and that would lead them to the wrong answer. So this is just a general tip, guys, that in the BMAT, they don't choose the um, answers on option, uh, uh, sorry, randomly. They choose the answers based on what they think people would commonly get wrong or potential slip ups. Um, so yeah, just be careful with that guys, but hopefully guys that has made sense and we really look forward to seeing you in the next video.